What's up everybody? Today we're talking through the Okmo 100 amp hour group 24 lithium iron phosphate battery. This one I've actually had for a couple of months and have been using it in my 12 volt trolling motor application on my smaller boat. I'm running like a 54 pound thrust old motor guide, Minn Kota, Minn Kota trolling motor on that. And it's been doing just fine. Lots and lots of runtime as you would expect out of an LIFE PL4 battery. So you get the tons and tons of energy density in these lithium batteries much more than you would out of a lead acid or even an AGM battery. You get a lot lighter weight. This is uh, 23 pounds, I think it is. So about half the weight of a lead acid battery. And it's a smaller package. Like I mentioned, it's a group 24 size battery. So it's quite a bit smaller than a group 31 or maybe your boat came with group 27s. Still a smaller package there. So you're saving a little bit more space in your boat for other stuff that you may need. They also fit a standardized tray, right? You can go on Amazon or whatever and order a group 24 tray, plop this thing right in there and it's held down securely in your boat or your kayak or whatever you're using for lots and lots of runtime. So you get the cycle life, you get the weight reduction, you get the energy density like I talked through. So per Okmo on their website, they have all your traditional battery management features. So you've got cell balancing with the BMS, you've got low temperature charge protection, LTCP, so that's making sure that you don't charge the battery below freezing and damage the cells. It's got high temperature, it's got low voltage, high voltage, and it's also called out that it has overcurrent protection, which we'll test here in just a minute. It also has a five-year warranty on it. So for the price point, looking on their site right now, it's $180. It may be a little bit cheaper on Amazon. I'll, link a, I'll put a link to both of them down below. Make sure you check them both, kind of shop your best deal. But for the price point, you know, you're, you're well within a lot of different companies when it comes to a Group 24 100 amp hour battery. Performance wise in the boat, this one has been doing just fine. And we actually just finished up our testing with our 2500 watt inverter. We had to up the inverter a little bit for this one. So let's go ahead and jump to that. Alrighty, we are gonna go ahead and do a test on our Okmo 100 amp hour Group 24 battery. You've probably seen this rig before. And this rig is now has a new Vivor 2500 watt inverter. I had a 2000 watt inverter before. And some of these, they really like need to get hot for the BMS to kick out. For some reason, they're not quite as responsive. Uh, the, the results of these tests seem to vary quite a bit. I've got some batteries, you kick them over 100 amps, 100 amp hour battery, and they drop out within, I don't know, a couple seconds. Some of them really are temperature based and it takes quite a while for the MOSFETs or whatever inside the BMS to heat up enough to drop out uh, the discharge on it. So we have enough power now at 12 volts to really you know, you know, put beans to it. And we are going to do the following. I've got two heaters right over there. They are 110 volt heaters that I have set up to my inverter. And we are going to turn on the heaters. It, the first one's gonna get it well over 100 amps and we're gonna start the timer. From there, we will add the second heater to throw some more beans at it. And it may take a minute for this BMS to kick out. We're just gonna let it run and uh, monitor some temperatures a little bit and uh, see what happens. So without further ado, let's go. Heater number one is now on 137 amps. Recording here, this is good. Oh, I missed it. How bad, I missed like three seconds. And you know what? I'm probably gonna just throw it to it and see what happens. Oh, there we go. 162 amps. 190. Ooh. We are, uh, we're gonna start getting hot. 200 amps. Two sixteen, two twenty. So we're pulling 2300 watts, which is like I said before, that's why we had to step it up to a 2500 watt inverter. And uh, we're over 2500 watts, 240 amps. These fans have not turned on this inverter yet, which is interesting. 254 amps, 2600 watts. Terminals are hot. 250 amps going on two minutes. And you know what? If this thing doesn't drop out, I'm just going to stop the test. I'm not going to push it. 
All right, I'm gonna go ahead and stop it there. Oh. The inverter kicked out. The 2500 watt inverter kicked out. Uh, yeah, real hot. So, um, do with that information as you will. Uh, I was expecting it to drop out at around 100 amps, 150 amps. It ran for about two minutes and 20 seconds, over 100 amps, and a lot of that was over 200 amps. So, uh, yeah, that's how it went. Not uncommon. Uh, I would say that a lot of these batteries, they are hit or miss. They either kick out or they don't kick out. Some of them almost immediately over 100 amps. If I refer to their website specifically, it states right below this video here, where is it? The 100 amp hour BMS provides fortress-like protection against overcharged and over discharge. Um, I don't know what to tell you. I pulled over 200 amps on this thing. It still continued to, to output. And, you know, that, like I mentioned, it's not uncommon. But with any installation, let me harp on this for a second. You need to make sure they have proper circuit protection. I don't care what the BMS does. Your wiring needs to be protected to the right gauge. So you got four gauge wire. Make sure you got your 60 amp breaker. Whatever it is, look up the spec and make sure that you have the proper circuit protection on anything you install to any battery. I don't care whose it is or what it is, circuit protection must have. That said, um, like I said, performance wise on the water and the application, it's been doing just fine. That is the Okmo battery. Got some links down in the description. I would love if you can check out this video over here, like and subscribe to the channel and we'll see you on the next one.